Hey, what's happening guys? We are going to do some experiments here in the next few weeks with some vacuum tube circuits, some audio circuits, amplifier type circuits. And to do that, we need a high voltage source and that's what we're going to look at today. But before we do that, I just want to show for anybody who is not up on vacuum tubes, how they work like a transistor. Now, vacuum tubes were invented in 1904. I forget the guy's names. And <clears throat> they were the number one way to amplify a signal or rectify um, a voltage until the late 1940s when Bell Laboratories invented <clears throat> the transistor. So the most basic vacuum tube, and what was originally invented in 19. 04 looked just like this. We have the tube with no air in it. It has a plate at one side. It has a cathode. The plate you could also call the anode. And it has a cathode at the other side with a heater. And what happens is as the heater heats up the cathode, electrons start firing off of it. And they go to the plate, the anode. Because remember, electrons go from negative to positive. So that was the first vacuum tube. The one we are going to be dealing with is what's known as a triode. So it has one more connection here. And that connection is known as the grid. And you could think of it as a control grid. Think of it like louvers in a window. You know, if, if you look at it, the window from the side with all the louvers in the down position, no light can get in. But if you open the louvers a little bit, a little bit of light can come in. You open them more and a lot of light come in. And that's how the grid works, by putting a voltage onto the grid we control the electron flow from the cathode to the anode or plate. And that's pretty much what we've got going on with an NPN transistor. We have the collector, the emitter, and the base. So from the collector, we put in our voltage. It's called VCC. And from the emitter, generally we go to ground. And we take our signal off of here and we control the flow or the amount that the transistor conducts by varying the current at the base all right so the tube we're going to use the 12 ax7 is a dual triode and what that means is you basically have two separate triodes in one tube. They have two anodes, two cathodes, two heaters, and two grids. Now, here's the thing. We need a lot of voltage. We need this plate voltage to be somewhere in the 300 volt DC range. And when we're dealing with tube amplifiers, that voltage is called B plus. So, you know, in the old days, you got a big ass piece of iron uh, transformer that took your line voltage and ramped it up to your, you know, 450 volts or so, which was then rectified, smoothed out and everything until you got to the voltage you needed for the B plus. And that's fine. That's what I did in that amplifier I built a long time ago. But I don't want to deal with all that just when we're breadboarding and stuff. Because what we're going to do is I redid that vacuum tube board that had the V is too small. That's from this video over here. So we're going to see that video next. Well, not that video, but the one where I redid it. But why we're here today is to check out this board right here. I just stumbled across this thing on Amazon searching high voltage DC power supplies because which is that's what I was planning on getting but this is this is specifically made for this this is our input here 
then we have two outputs over here. So yeah, three different things here. So this is our input, which you can see right here. We're going to put in 12 volt DC. In our output, we can get 150 volts to 450 volts DC, which is our B+. And then we can get our filament voltage, also known as our heater voltage, to heat up the tube. So that's very cool. If we take a look here, we can see the schematic on it. I'm not going to really dig into this too much. It's basically a buck boost converter. The LM2576 is a uh, buck converter. This chip, I would assume, is the boost converter. We got a little NPN PNP giggle going on here. You can get a good look at that there. So there's the LM2576. Uh, there's our other chip. I can't quite tell what it says. Maybe you guys can read it. All right. So that's enough of this. Let's hook it up, see how it works. All right, so I cut up some wire. We're gonna use red and black for our DC in. We'll get those stripped. We're gonna use greens for our heater. That didn't work out so well. Hey, quit biting it so hard. There we go. And we're going to use blue and white for our high voltage. High voltage. Damn. Damn. There we go. Hmm, there is the ground. Well, there's a ground plane, so we're going to need to figure out which one goes to where. Take a close look here on our input side. There's the ground plane. That one is connected to the ground plane. So that one, the one on the outside, is our ground, which I am going to mark with a sharpie. Not with that sharpie apparently. <laughs> that one may have been in a drawer for a good 30 years. There we go. So we marked that one with a sharpie. And now we know which one is our ground. Get our wires put in. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but on the back side of this, see they've added a little extra, a little extra solder there. Okay, so there's our filament. Get the, you don't need to watch me hook these wires up, right? All right, so I have all the wires hooked up and got the power supply wires here. Let's uh, show you the power supply voltage powered up. So we got 12 volts on there and I've got it set for a current limiting at 100 milliamps to start out with. So let's start off with our low voltage. Now remember this should be our filament and in this case it should be 12 volts. So we'll hook up our ground first, always the ground first. 
and then we'll plug this in and we'll see if she explodes right here we go one two three we got an led lit on the board and we're getting 4.28 volts on our filament so we need to adjust that this uh, let me move that a little bit this pot down here is the filament adjust so we need to run that up to 12 volts There we go. Wow. 4.31. Oh, the current is clamping. Hang on a second. Let me uh, power that off. We'll run it up to half an amp. And the current is still clamping. All right. Hang on. Since it's not going to blow up, I'll go ahead and run it up to about two amps. There we go. That's much better. Right now it's drawing 1.6 amps. 11.75. Seven point eight, seven point eight one. Come on, that's as far as it's going to go. Eleven point eight one. All right, let's disconnect the power from it and very carefully. We're going to hook up the power to the high voltage side. There might be some residual voltage here out of that capacitor and inductor. Yeah, it's still reading a little bit. It's going down. All right, let's power it up. And see where she goes. Right now we're uh, drawing 0.868 amps, 241. This is our high voltage adjust pot here. Well, that's going the wrong way. Let's go this way. Two seventy one. Honestly, 271 is probably fine. But we're going to... Yeah, it's drawing 1.6 amps. 12 volts. 282. When we get further into this, we'll adjust it further. I just wanted to see how it works. Now, you notice there's also a pot here. And that is for the current adjustment. All right, so here's the board on Amazon. High voltage DC DC boost converter. Okay, go away, honey. Boost converter, 12 volt in, 150 to 420 out, 170 volt, 230 volt, 1.25 to 12 volt or 6.3 volt filament adjustable step up, power supply, two way power supply unit, DC regulator module for tube preamp, Nixie tube. I mean, how, how much better can you get? I mean, it's just it's made for this. I wonder if we can see that what that chip name is on any of these. I can almost see it. It's a Textris instrument something or other. Sorry guys, my eyes just aren't as good as they used to be. Anyway, I'm going to put a link to this down below. Let's see what they say. Uh, a tube preamp, 12 volt boost converter. Filament high voltages, input 12, blah, blah, blah. Frequency is 80 kilohertz. So that's definitely out of the range of uh, most human hearing. Maybe if you're like some super hearing person, you could hear 80 kilohertz. I can't. Hell, I can't even hear my phone ring. Uh, PCB size, 
20k potentiometer to adjust the filament voltage, 30k potentiometer to adjust the uh, high voltage voltage, and a 1k pot to adjust the current from 30 to 50 milliamps, which is perfect. Tip, as the output voltage increases, the power decreases. Yes, that's pretty much Ohm's law. And it also stands for, uh, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'm going to put a uh, link to this down below if you're interested. I mean, I think $16.99 at the time I bought it. It'll probably be $29.99 in a couple days. I think it's a great price for a high voltage power supply. It looks well constructed. It doesn't scare me very much, you know. If you're going to do something like this and play with high voltage, Joey, I'm talking to you. You know, touch it with just one hand at a time. I know it's not connected to mains. You know, don't lick it or anything, and you should be all right. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.